Hi and welcome to this chess session on YouTube here for you. I'm David Wigner and here we go with today's game or this time's game. Um, this is actually um, Frank J. Marshall as you can see him. And uh, this is a game that he played way back in 1915. 105 years ago in New York tournament. I find this game very interesting and at the same time I like to represent the um, these great um, achievers like Frank Marshall and Paul Morphy as I'm doing of late. I like to honour them as the greats of all and I think that they're just awesome and they are very, very inspirational for my chess at least. And I'm sure they will be and can be and are for you too. So here we go with this game that I haven't pre-programmed. So we're just going to bid farewell to Frank James Marshall and thank him very much for the games of chess that he played. And as seen on the screen, you can see that Frank and Carolyn Marshall are with their son, Frank Jr., in 1907. That's 113 years ago. Photo was taken at Ostend. Sorry if I've mispronounced that. Belgium. Now, speaking about mispronunciation, I'm not sure how to actually state his opponent's name, who is black in this case. So here we go. His opponent is, um, I'm just going to spell it, C-H-A-J-E-S. Now, I don't want to um, mispronounce it, so that's as far as I'm going to attempt. This is in Frank James Marshall's um, great American chess players, Marshall's Best Games of Chess. Well, it's actually Marshall's Best Games. It's an older book. It's from about that era. So here we go. And I hope you enjoy this game here for you. <clears throat> I'm currently looking at the 12 mistakes that people on YouTube make, especially when they start out. But I'm still making them. And I still make mistakes in chess, of course. So here we go. So this will be a good game for you to have a look at because... It's not all one-sided, if you get what I mean. And I haven't actually looked at this game ever, but it does look very interesting, especially the middle game position for Frank J. Marshall um, in the middle game. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. This cannot be good as it relieves blacks black of further anxiety in the centre as well as freeing up his Queen's Bishop to be able to get some sort of flight squares. So here we got E, D5 as it's placed back in this book. It's King's Pawn Takes Pawn. Now here, book gives nine queen c2 or queen to bishop two instead would have prevented knight to e4. As knight e4 after castling, has the beauty of knight here to e4, which is played, 
has the beauty of um, asking this question of the bishop. But also, this looks like 94 here, as I'm showing you now, or knight to king 5, shows um, up as maybe like it's losing a pawn, isn't it? Because don't we just take this knight with the bishop and thereby um, after pawn takes bishop, um, knight takes, and then just the bishop's protected twice. So if bishop takes knight though, white doesn't, black does not play um, d e4, knight e4, but instead plays bishop takes bishop on g5 after knight, knight e4. Uh, have I got that right? Yeah, knight, if knight e4, different. Then we take the um, knight first, and then if bishop takes bishop on e7, then black just merely plays queen e7 and starts to win a piece from the fork on e4 with the, the bishop or knight, whatever it was. And that sort of thing. So anyway... That aside, so what I'm trying to show you is this. If this, okay, then this, okay. If this, then this. And now, this is now protected. So this move here is no good for white because it just creates a loss of a piece for white, as I'm sure you can appreciate. So we're going back to 94, and now we're going, um, we're going to bishop f4, okay, because that's what was actually played by Marshall. And now Marshall plays my move. Uh, now Sargis plays my move f5 which now if anyone looked at this now they would think oh we're gonna put this game on again i'm actually trying to honor these players um because they're just they, these players are just so great and i'm enjoying showing the canterbury juniors um these types of games because they are very inspirational and they're quite there's quite a bit to be said to gleaming gleaning these um games from the actual books of the greats that's my opinion now g5 the consolidation of the center consequent upon white six move which was um, pawn takes pawn in CD5, has enabled um, his opponent, Marshall's opponent, to embark on a dangerous kingside attack. So we all know that about Marshall, that he is quite good at um, getting out of um, difficult situations. But... The next move is bishop g3, tempting black to go for the win of a piece by f4. So bishop g3, and now this is tempting black to play f4. When after knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, bishop takes king's pawn e4, F G three Bishop takes pawn King H eight Bishop's pawn takes White would be compensated with three pawns and the attack. So did I see that? No. And so here we go, we're going backwards now. And now we're going to go with pawn to g4. Which looks a bit odd, really. 
knight to d2. I'd probably every day of the week play knight e5, but knight d2. Whoops, we don't want that. And now comes bishop g5. So this is actually quite a good game to look at anyway, because it's sort of like as if I'm playing the black pieces, which I'm not, of course, except for on my chess board here on this demonstration board, which incidentally is, um, what's it called now? It's, uh, oh, what is it called? I don't know. It's just a database, chess base or something. Might be chess base, I think. So here's um, bishop g5. This is, you know, like black's got the pull on this position. If we look at this, just if we just think about this here and this here, black's got the kind of pull on the position because black's in white sort of um, part of the board, this part here. Whereas there's nothing for white on black's part of their side, which... Uh, if the whistle is blown by the referee in chess, this piece here and this pawn do not have to go back to their position, if you get what I mean. So here we've got rook a e1. This is countering the kingside demonstration by development in the centre. Well, what does that all mean? So this is countering the kingside demonstration by development in the centre. And that's um, saying that we're looking for white to compensate by playing in the centre. I believe that's what it might be saying, according to what Alexander Alakine would play like. Which is incidentally one of the other players that I will soon cover here on this YouTube channel here, chess channel here for you. White right now threatens to break. And the other thing is, is this, I thought that too, is we cannot play before rook a1, f4, because then we can just get g, f3. I'll show you. So if white instead plays f4 here, then we have e, f3. Okay. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, the rook has to take here. But it, it might not be very good. Um, I, I might be just guessing here because I'm not Frank Marshall or even his opponent. So here we have Rook A E1. I don't want to spend too long on that. But now White now threatens to break the attack by the eventual. Ah, oh, f3, you see. So if I go, um, this is what they're saying. Um, if f3 here, okay, then everyone can see straight away bishop e3 check. First move, possibly. And then the next move is equally nice as this move here. If black so wishes. Or if bishop f2, then maybe knight f2 and then uh, can come out here sort of thing. Okay, so rook f2 and then we've got queen h4 maybe. Or maybe we've got um, g f3. No, it sort of relieves that. That's a move I was thinking, computer. g3, how come you came out with my move? So... Um, that's just a little bit of small analysis. So, but that's why I wanted to play or I accepted this move as well. Rook a e1. So, white wants to now play f3 and e4 of all things, which is actually quite a thematic bust for white in this sort of position where they are facing these pawns. So, f3 and e4 are known in the stonewall defense for white or black against the stonewall defense which is one thing i do play for black or white is the f3 to e4 bust 
So here we've got Queen E8 or Queen to King 1 it's, as it's called in the book. Now look, Bishop F4. Queen to H5. Looks very awesome, doesn't it, for black? And then we have Knight E2. And then we have Rook F6. Now look at this. Look at the look at the position of the pieces. Other than the knight and the bishop and the rook for black, everything else for Marshall is in a reasonable place. But um, Marshall is being threatened with um, some activity on his king side. So the book actually says the position has now become very threatening, to say the least, situation. White must persist in the strategic, uh, uh, sorry, the strategic idea of breaking the center. So white must persist because black's position is looking for white very threatening. So here we go. I'm not going to spend hours on this, but here we go with the next move. Is knight to g3, which um, threatens the queen, of course. So the queen just merely moves here and says, now what? To white. Now we have bishop takes g5. And we have queen takes bishop. Queen g5. And here's f3 as promised. And notice that now the queen is attacking the e3 pawn. And had it not been um, protected before, then queen e3 would be the next move. Okay. Let's just say that um, that is there. Then black would have queen e3, knight g3, check, and um, rook h6, checkmate. So here's f3, and we have just another piece goes off the board. Another attacking piece has left the board, so it's starting to look a bit better. And it reminds me of um, some positions that Magnus Carlsen has played, where we just hug the king into here, maybe. I'm not saying that white's going to do that because I haven't actually looked at the game. So I'm looking at, at it first time fresh as well. Now, maybe black would like to play this move. Um, but then I think, um, we're just going to leave it there. Um, then I think the um, rook would actually take, even though it doesn't look pretty for the white pawns. And then the king has a space on f2 after rook f3. And maybe being able to swing this rook to the h file unless there's some sort of contest on h6. So here we have now black has heard what I've said, knight f8. And this is um, saying, well, of, you know, just primitively speaking here, this is saying, well, I've, I've not succeeded as of yet with my assault on, the, on your king, Mr. Marshall. So I'm going to have to bring some reinforcements into play. So here's a move FG4. And who would think that, um, I think I've got that right. No, I haven't. Sorry. Um, knight to bishop one, and then we have e4. So, just misread that with my bad eyes. So here we got f4. Which looks quite cool, really, doesn't it, for black? 
So we have pawn takes bishop pawn, you see, it's the other way around. It's not bishop's pawn takes, but we've got pawn takes bishop pawn. So that's g f4 and rook f4. And now we have bishop's pawn takes pawn. So it's a little bit good for my brain as well, as anyone else's, that um, we have to swing back into this descriptive notation. But it can be a wee bit, a wee bit um, difficult, especially if I haven't done it too often. So ha now we have rook takes pawn or rook g4, which is all right. And what? Oh no, I've gone wrong there. So sorry. We have bishops, pawn takes pawn. Okay, sorry. Now we have bishops, bishop takes g4. So now whites um, allowed black kind of to swing um, their bishop into play. But the, the position is getting a little bit more open. Okay. Now here clearly queen takes pawn is no good because of bishop c4 pinning the queen or even just rook takes rook. So we can't do that. So we're just going to go cd5 here of course. And now the rook comes to e5. So white's getting back in the game because now it's not so bad as it was before. My opinion. Queen f6. And now white just starts hammering away on the d5 pawn and also so queen d5 and also queen b7 maybe. Um, so here we go. Rook to d8. Now white can of course maybe take that but I don't think it's really too advisable. And so if white takes this, then I believe that this move, we might play rook takes rook first, knight takes or bishop takes, and then we have bishop to e6, and that would feel uncomfortable for me at least. So after rook d8 came queen b7. The game has now taken on a different shape with white's queen free and a pawn ahead. However, the win is not yet easy. So I'm going to play the resulting moves rather quickly, okay? Unless there's comment to make. So look at the look at the trans transition here. It's just amazing, isn't it? Really. And still, if Y opts to take on D5, I think it won't be any good. But maybe it will be. I'm not sure. Now we have a wee surprise move. So can you find a wee surprise move for um, black to meet? <laughs> to meet is rook to somewhere e4, see? And so the pawn cannot capture, of course. So the queen just goes back a step. And now it's threatening what? Is it this threat here, bishop? f3 attacking the rook and the queen g2 checkmate I don't know rook to king 5 it looks like um, white's going to be content with a draw queen f4 rook e4 
Queen G5, that was what was actually played. And why do people play this? Because um, it's good to get out of the, you know, you might be in a little bit of time control problems with white or black. So to repeat moves a couple of times can gain you time on the clock. Now we have bishop to g5. So if the rook moves away, well, rook here to e5 and queen takes pawn. If the rook moves off here, for example, moves here, let's say it moves here, then that's different. But we would have rook e7, queen e7, queen d5, and maybe even just queen here check if the king moves to a dark square. So here, after bishop g b5, we have rook d6, but of course, rook e5, and now comes queen g7. Now, the thing is, I'm actually wondering here whether black can just go queen f4 here again. Um... But in this case, the um, the check might not be the check to the um, rook on d5. If we take the um, if we take the um, pawn on d5, I'm not sure if it's any good with bishop e6 still. What's happening there? So anyway, we're going to go. Keep to the program. So black's very consistent and persistent. Still wanting to attack white with um, on the queen king side. Here comes this rock. White has other ideas. A swap will favour white greatly. Even if queen takes queen, rook takes, or pawn takes, bishop f3, uh, white will merely play knight e3 and king f2, etc. I believe. So we have queen e5. White has attained his second objective or subjective. The exchange of queens and the queenside pawn majority, these pawns here, two versus one, will ultimately decide the issue. By doing this, it's stopping black get a pass pawn, which would be possibly compensation. So rook e5. And I'll make sure that I finish this sort of in the 30 minute mark. Notice he doesn't rush off with some sort of spectacle, spectacular, spectacular tactical um, disadvantage at the end of the day. He keeps his call, just plays rook c5 and is attacking the knight of course. So back comes this bishop. There's a, a white's pieces, black's pieces are starting to get a little bit sort of like having to overload themselves a little bit. See? So white's actually, that's my opinion, white's actually um, starting to nibble at black's defences. And just comes back, keeps this cool, doesn't go 
like there's no fire. He's just got one, two, three, versus one, two. So he's taking great care not to just ultimately lose here for some strange reason. Now we've got this move, okay? Now this is the move I was actually looking at. But we we just have um, this move here, you see. So that if rook takes bishop, no good. Because knight f6 and then white is an exchange and a pawn up after knight e4. So, but that, this is important because if white didn't have this, then white would be starting to look very sad. So we have knight d5 and rook f7, knight c3. So now we're wanting to maybe go here or maybe go here and maybe go here. All sorts of things. Now we're entering the last phase. A threat. So we were bond to threats with a threat. Notice this calmness, just like, okay, you're attacking my bishop or it's defended of course with the knight, but I'm just going to move it back. So we've got knight f6 check, pawn takes, rook takes, and this looks um, very good. But then we just have b6, rook g3 check, king f2, rook takes bishop, b7, rook d8. What's the last move? And then I'm off. I'm away. But thank you very much, uh, Mr. Frank J. Marshall, for leaving these wonderful, great games of chess. So the last move is, and well done, and that caused Frank's opponent to resign. Rook a5 with the idea of rook a8 is, is really, really um, devastating for black to achieve equality at least. Okay, thank you. All the best with your chess, no matter where it's at. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I look to bring more of these great games to you where I can see them fresh as well. Primarily try and enjoy the game of chess. Thank you.